Good day everyone, I'm Norman Walberger. Today we're going to look at arithmetic with multisets via trees. So we're going to connect with computer science. We have a novel way of thinking about arithmetic where multisets are the basic foundational objects and basically we create everything just from boxes inside boxes inside boxes. But now we're going to have a more two-dimensional, perhaps somewhat easierly visualized uh, point of view towards them. So here is an example of a pure M set. We have a lot of nested boxes. Here's an empty set, an empty set, or rather we should say empty M set, empty M set. Here's a pair of empty M sets in a, a box. Here is a bunch of nested uh, ones and also the same repeated there. Now our notation is that an empty M set is denoted by zero, so we could replace this with zero, this with zero, and then this will be the M set zero zero. This will be the M set, uh, that inner one there is replaced with zero, so we have zero inside an M set, inside an M set, and this is the same as that one. And then we could reduce that a little bit further because this M set here, the M set containing zero and zero, is our number two. And this M set containing just a single zero is the number one. So these two can be replaced with these ones. So this is a sort of alternate notation. Uh, this is sort of the elemental point of view where we just have M sets. Here we're introducing natural numbers also. So today we want to see how this arithmetic translates into the world of trees. And what kind of trees are we talking about? So of course a tree is a graph, okay, that which is acyclic, doesn't have any cycles in it. So there is a unique uh, sort of path from any one vertex to another uh, which doesn't uh, repeat itself. And the trees we're talking about are rooted trees. That means they have a distinguished node. And we're going to put that distinguished node at the top. So we could also perhaps say this is like a roofed tree with the roof up at the top. Now importantly, this is a little bit different from the roofed trees that appeared in my series on solving polynomial equations, if you've watched that. We solve polynomial equations by introducing a, a broad extension of the Catalan story and trees played an important role. But those were planar trees. Okay? So these are non-planar trees, by which we mean that the actual uh, order on the page that we put these sort of sub-branches is unimportant. So let's have a look at, at this one here. Okay? It can be represented with this tree here. So this top node represents the outside brackets. And then inside that there are these uh, sort of subdivisions. There's an M set, another M set, another M set, another one, another one. So there's these five sort of interior M sets. They are corresponding to these nodes here, which is one level down. So the, the lines here just represent inclusions of M sets in M sets. Now these ones here are empty, so we're going to denote them with just a node which is empty. And this one here is represented here. It has two empty ones inside it. This one here has another one inside it, which then contains an empty set. And this one is similar. So this representation is not unique because we can interchange the orders of things. So this is an alternate representation where we've taken these sort of two um, branches, if you like, um, and brought them on the other side and brought these to the other side. Okay, so these are equal. Now in our... Um, connection with algebra, we've seen that a M set of this kind really corresponds to an algebraic object, a relatively familiar algebraic object. So this is the number two, the two zeros here, and this two that's appearing in the M set uh, corresponds to alpha zero squared, where alpha zero is some kind of basic variable that's introduced in the poly number context here. And these two um, M set ones that are appearing inside here uh, give us um, 2 alpha 1 corresponding to a, a second variable alpha 1. So we end up with an algebra, not just in one variable, but with a, an unbounded number of variables corresponding to natural numbers. And so we want to see today how this algebra, sort of polynomial algebra, uh, corresponds to the tree story and how the tree representation uh, sheds light and gives us new ideas uh, about the structure of this mathematics. Now rooted or roofed trees are very important objects in combinatorics, but they also play a very important role in computer science. 
where they're often used to store data structures in convenient ways that allow for you know, nice search and, and, and sorting and so on. So let's just uh, review some standard probably familiar terminology in the context of rooted or roofed trees. So here's that same one that we had before. And um, so that node up at the top will be called the root. And it has the property that it doesn't have any parents. So the relationship between a node like this and the node directly below it is that of parent and child. So the top one is the parent and the one below is the child. Okay, And those nodes which don't have any children, so they're sort of at the bottom of some branch, are called leaves. So a leaf has no children. And then there is also this concept of uh, height and depth. So the height is the number of steps that you need to go down to get to the furthest leaf below you. So for example, if you're here, uh, you go down one step. So this is at the height of one. This is also at the height of one. This one here is also at a height of one because that's the maximum that you can go down to get to a leaf. There's another corresponding concept which is depth. So it's a, let's say you're swimming in an ocean, okay, you're inside the ocean. The height is how far you are from the bottom of the seafloor, let's say. And the depth is how far you are from the, the surface of the water, okay? So the depth is measured how far we have to go up to get to the root. So the root has depth zero, and say these ones here are of depth two. So we have to take one, two steps to get to them from the root. Okay, so those are just some um, basic uh, terminology from, uh, from computer science. So I should mention that this this development of arithmetic is somewhat new here, right? Um, it, we don't have a lot of experience with this yet, so perhaps some of the things that I'm telling you are to be thought of in a provisional fashion. We're sort of exploring this territory. I wouldn't say that anything is set in stone. We're still trying to find the sort of optimal ways of structuring this theory. And it's possible that I might make some mistakes, so I hope that if I do, you will correct me. And along the way, I'm going to try to introduce perhaps some terminology or notation which I hope will help us in this exploration. That's what I want to do today here, just with this slide. I want to introduce a sort of multiplicity convention that will make it perhaps a little bit easier for us to display things. So it's very easy to get overwhelmed with all the brackets and, and such that we have. So here's that same uh, M set that we were considering. And we could write it out as a, um, a sum, okay, because there are two of these, uh, these ones here. And, um, and then we could uh, write this one here, that's that one. And then there are two of these guys here. So um, we could then uh, sort of think about this in another way by starting with the same big outside M set and representing these two empty M sets in here by a single M set with a a little subscript two, a left sub-index, okay, so to the left and down. And this here is telling us that there are two of these guys in this bigger M set. Similarly, this one here, these guys here, there's two of them, so we could also represent that with a, a two. Okay, so that's just a little convention that we could use, especially useful if we have a lot of repetitions, like if we're dealing with, with much bigger multiples where you don't want to physically exhibit you know, 300 uh, different uh, copies of the same thing. Much easier just to put a little 300 under there. Note that uh, we could also, in fact, go a little bit further and actually replace this one also uh, if we wanted to, because we have two empty M sets in here, so we could rub off one of them and just put a little two uh, to the left of the other one. So this corresponds in the tree world also to a corresponding convention. So here is our original A. And um, we could then maybe represent this a little bit more efficiently by saying, okay, look, there's two of these empty M sets coming from the root. Okay, why don't we just write one of them and put a little two beside that node also to the left and maybe a little bit down, representing that this child here is to be thought of just as, uh, as one of a pair. There's actually two of them. And uh, here's another uh, pair of branches that are sort of the same. So th this is a subtree from here and from here. They're the same. Okay. So instead of writing both of them out, we could just write one of them out and put a little index there, representing that there's two of them. Okay. That 
sort of corresponds to um, to that one there. And then we could actually also go one step further. So if we did the rubbing out here, then we, these two here that are out uh, coming from this one here, we could replace them with a single one also with a two. Okay, so I just offer this as a, a potential labor-saving device that will make it easier for us to uh, make expressions both in this uh, MSET point of view and also in this tree language. So in my last video I also introduced the idea of counting and there are different kinds of counting functions uh, starting with Z and then we had an N counting function, a P counting function, and an M counting function sort of corresponding to the different levels of zero, uh, number, polynumber, multi-number. Okay, so they have a nice interpretation in this tree language. So let's look at our example again. There's our M set A. They're written out in the usual way here in, in the tree form. So the Z counting function is very simple. Uh, just takes any M set and sends it to zero, the empty M set. N of A, which is the closest to our regular counting function uh, is this M set. It's the M set of Z of A's, Z of little a's, where little a belongs to capital A. So what we have to do is we have to take all of the constituent elements, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, and replace them all with empty sets or empty M sets. So there, there they are there. An empty M set is the same as zero, so similarly we just say that we're replacing each of them with zero. And then the resulting M set is the number five. And what we're doing there in terms of the diagram, you can see has a very natural, simple sort of representation. What we're doing first of all with Z of A is we're just looking at the top of it, okay, the top of it, and there's a single node there, and so that's the, the zero node. And when we, so that's sort of like Z. And then when we go to N of A, what we're doing is we're just going down one level to the level one, or maybe we could say to the depth one. That means sort of we're sort of chopping it off there and looking at everything above that. Okay, so if we just chop the whole thing there, then we get a much simpler M set, which just has five uh, leaves coming out of the, the root. And uh, that's then the number five. So that corresponds to the counting function n. And what about p of a? Well, that's defined to be the m set n of a, where a is an a. And so there what we have to do is we have to uh, look at in each one of these and replace each one of them with uh, the n of them. So the n of this is, is, is zero, n of this is zero, so we, we're just putting those zeros. n of this, well, that to do that we have to replace all the things inside it with with zeros. Okay, so just get zero zero. But this one here, uh, we have to replace this the thing that's inside here with a zero. So instead of having a um, three nested brackets, we end up only with two nested brackets. So this one and this one end up simplifying to m set zero and m set zero. And what that amounts to is truncating the story at that level. So we're going down to depth two, but no further. Okay, so that's, that's our P counting function. So the P counting function looks at everything above that. It says P of the M set is just what you get when you truncate right there. The thing above it is P of A. So that's a very attractive way of counting. And of course, it's obvious how to extend that to further depths or further levels. In this case, M of A, well, that's the M set of P of A's, A and A. That turns out to be all of A in this case, and that sort of corresponds to chopping off at that level there. So that's the M. And since this thing here is uh, uh, a multi-number, okay, because it's, um, it's an M set of polynumbers, so uh, the M counting function actually just outputs uh, the, the M set itself. So the general rule here that we're seeing is that in this world at the level of trees, and sort of geometrically, these various counting functions just correspond to truncations. And that makes arguments uh, 
about the sort of functorial properties that the counting functions have with respect to the operations a lot easier to, to sort of see because we just have to ask, well, what happens if, you know, if we look at uh, addition or multiplication, so you know, up to a certain level, okay? So that's a, a nice aspect of the two-dimensional visual uh, approach that we get with the tree point of view. I want to introduce another idea which I think is useful here. The idea of you know, taking a box and which might have stuff inside it and sort of closing the lid so that you can no longer look inside and see what it has in it. Maybe you can shake it, you know, but no, you, we're just sort of thinking about a box which, which may have stuff inside it, but that content is maybe not visible to us. So I want to talk about the idea of closed boxes or correspondingly closed nodes in the, in the tree uh, version. So here again is our familiar A. Okay, there's a sort of more succinct way of representing it. Here's another way of thinking about what A is sort of geometrically, which is really more in the line of boxes. So here the boxes are represented by rectangles. So there's the big rectangle, which corresponds to that one up to here. And then these five here are the five elements of A, which themselves are rectangles or squares. And uh, these ones here are empty. And uh, this one here has two boxes inside it, which otherwise are empty. And these ones here both have a box inside, but that box is not empty. It rather has another box inside both of them. So this is a, also a very attractive way of thinking about uh, things. Also has a bit more of a two-dimensional uh, aspect. So what we want to think about now is, is another way of um, sort of condensing this kind of thing because in principle these things could be very big, right? We don't want to be writing these trees down if we really need to in all their messy detail, especially if they have lots of branches with a lot of depth. So we could maybe represent this thing in, in a, a, a bit more succinct way by replacing one of these nodes with um, just... Um, a letter representing the contents, representing that box and its contents. So for example, let's consider this one here. So when we look at this node here, okay, I want you to think about this node as not really so much a node, but actually as a, a subtree. So I want you to think about this, this thing here as representing the tree that's emanating from that point. In other words, the tree that has that as a, a root, okay? So that's that one along with two edges and, and these two, two down here. So that's like a little subtree, okay? In fact, uh, there it is there, and you can sort of see it's, it's what's called B. So what we can do is in this diagram here, we can replace this subtree with just a single node, which is the root of it, and we put a little, say, box around it, okay? And the letter B telling us that what we've done is we've made a substitution or we've uh, sort of rub some stuff out and this is then a placeholder for uh, some additional stuff which is uh, perhaps off the page or is recorded in memory somewhere else. Okay, so in this case here we see there's a little square around it, meaning there's actually more stuff. There's another tree coming from that node, but we have to find it somewhere else. And so we look over here, okay, here's, here's B. So then we could, we could recover this by putting that back in. Similarly, uh, this one here, that, that node there, is, is replaced with a little square around it, and, and we forget about the stuff below, and uh, the letter C. You know, so this, this is representing this sort of subtree, node, uh, node, and uh, leaf there. So this is a, a more efficient way of representing this thing that sort of compresses some of the information, perhaps, that we don't really need. Now, there's a corresponding way of thinking about that over here, in the sense of what we're doing is we're sort of closing the boxes, okay, but recording the contents of the box somewhere else. So corresponding to what I did over here, this B one over here is this one here. So going from this diagram to this diagram, what I've done is I've I sort of shaded the box so you no longer can see inside. There's something inside, perhaps, it doesn't have to be, but there could be something inside, but we don't know what it is. But over here, in different location, we see that actually this box is actually this one here. And similarly, this box C, which has also been shaded, so we lose the information, but it's over here somewhere. Okay, so this is a way then if we're doing certain manipulations and we don't actually need to know what the sort of finer structure is inside these boxes, inside other boxes. 
say. We might be making a calculation that only requires us to look at things down to a certain depth, and what's below that is, is sort of irrelevant for the actual computation we're interested in. So this kind of um, representation or simplification, I think, can be helpful in that kind of context. You see there's a natural parallel between what we're doing here in the tree world and what we're doing here in the more familiar sort of M set or box world. Okay, so now let's get to the arithmetic with trees. And I'm just going to give you this one slide which has a lot of information and some computations. And we're going to go through it and I hope that you can check and, uh, and see that I've done it correctly. So I have to admit here that you know I'm not uh, that familiar with this entire world. I'm sort of just making initial forays into it myself, and I have to admit that I often get a little bit confused making these calculations. You have to, where exactly are we? You know, on what level are we, etc. So if I feel a little bit like perhaps a, a, an intelligent but primitive person who has never been to school might feel when they're subjected to primary school uh, mathematics and they have to learn arithmetic for the first time. It's not that hard, but you know, there's these various conventions and you have to do quite a lot of practice actually before you get reasonably um, good at it. After all, in primary school we spend some years learning basic arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc. Even with just natural numbers. So there's a fair amount to learn there, but it, it is admittedly of an elementary nature, but still the unfamiliarity of it uh, probably does require some, some practice. So, so actually in that direction while I'm talking about that, maybe I could ask some of my viewers to think about, if you're interested in this uh, topic, of creating some resources that will help us to sort of uh, gain some experience in this world. So I think it would be nice to have some, some um, problem sets, like little homework uh, exercises that we could do, uh, maybe with solutions which have been carefully worked out so that we can see whether we, our, our intuition um, is a good one. Okay, so here's an example of such a thing. So here are two M sets, A and B, represented in tree form. Okay, so here's the root. We have three children. One of them's a leaf. The other two have some branches. That's of uh, depth uh, two, and that's of one that's of depth three. So, in terms of our familiar sort of algebra notation, this corresponds to an algebraic expression in our variables. Well, in numbers and variables. Okay, uh, in this case, one plus alpha zero plus alpha one. The one corresponds to that leaf down there. Okay, so that's just a single zero inside the big M set that corresponds to the number one. This thing here, it's like an M set. In, inside the big M set, there's an M set which has a single um, zero in it. So that's like this, this combination here is one, but it's inside the bigger M set, so it has the interpretation of alpha zero. And when we go one more, so when we have an M set inside an M set with a zero in it, then that's alpha one. Over here, B, we have another one, so there's the root, and there's a leaf coming down there, and here's a node which has two leaves coming out here. So this thing here by itself is the number two, but when the number two is appearing as, you know, down from the root, it has to be interpreted in a different way, okay? That's like the number two in, in an M set, that's different from the number two. So that has the interpretation of being alpha zero squared, in, in terms of this fundamental uh, variable, the, the zeroth variable, alpha zero. So this is one plus alpha zero squared. That's an interpretation of that. Okay, so here are the various operations that we know so far uh, how to do. And so the simplest one is, of course, addition, where we just take these things and add them. And what we're doing there, one way of thinking about it, is we're just um, we're just sort of uh, chopping these things off here and then taking these constituent entries, which are themselves little trees, okay, and we're just putting them all together. So uh, this tree right here gets copied. That's a new element of this, this new M set, okay. This one here gets copied and this one here gets copied. Similarly, this one gets copied, and this one here gets copied. Okay. So, 
you, you could think about it perhaps as sort of we, we're sort of snipping or cutting those edges there and cutting those edges there and taking those five edges and, and putting them together uh, with, with, in a new node. That's the tree version of taking the contents of these two M sets and dumping them out into, uh, into another box. Okay, A times B. This is A times B. And how do we get that? Well, what we have to do is we have to look at the, the elements of A. So there are three elements of A. Each of them is themselves a tree. And there are two elements of B. Each of them is itself a tree. And we have to take all possible combinations of elements of A and elements of B, like pairs, maybe that tree and, and that tree, and we have to add them, their M sets, so they can be added. So, for example, when we do that, we, we take this thing here, which is really like the M set, which is what we're calling 1, and this is the M set 0, and we add 1 and 0, we get 1, okay? So the effect of adding this and, and this is just to get this, so that's why that's appearing over there. And similarly, this plus this tree is it's this one here and this one plus this is also this one here okay so now then the next three are obtained by taking these three and adding this one uh, to it okay so for example if we take this tree here and we take this tree here and we add them so this is a tree with one leaf this is a tree with two leaves we add them we get a tree with three leaves when we add this one and this one we get a tree that has a root there, and then it has this subtree coming down, and also uh, two leaves coming out. And finally, when we add this to this, well, this is zero again, so we're just getting our, our thing that we started with there. So this is A times B. And what is it algebraically? Well, we sort of read through things. Um, uh, this one here is, uh, is, is one, okay? And uh, this one here is a 1, but it's contained in a big bracket, so that's alpha 0. This is alpha 1. This one here is, um, okay, this one here is maybe the next simplest one. This one here is alpha 0 squared. Okay, this one here is alpha 0 cubed. And this one here is a combination of alpha zeros. There's two, sort of two of them, so alpha 0 squared there, but there's also an alpha 1. So it corresponds to this polynomial in alpha 0 and alpha 1. And what about a caret b? Okay, so we're going to change our notation just a little bit. Uh, I was talking about exponentiation. Maybe that's not really such a great uh, terminology. A number of viewers have suggested that I step back away from that, and I think that's reasonable. But um, I sort of like this symbol, so I'm going to uh, stick with this suggestion that a viewer made that we stick with this thing here and, and call it the caret C-A-R-E-T, okay? So A caret B, what is that? So by definition what we have to do is we have to take these things here and take the various subtrees, the elements of this one, the elements of this one, and we have to pairwise multiply them. Multiply them, not add. Over here we were adding them. Here we have to multiply them. So for example we have to take this subtree and multiply it by this subtree. Okay, but this subtree is zero. When we multiply something by zero, we get zero. So we get a zero, a zero, a zero. The first three are going to be zeros. In fact, we're going to get another zero because, uh, because uh, when we multiply this one by, by this one here, we also get a zero. So the, the two that are non-trivial are the product of this and this, which is this, and this and this. So let's just check that. So the product of this tree and this tree. How do you take the product? Well, you have to look at um, all possible pairs of, of, of sub of, or of elements. This one has one element, this one has two elements. So we have to take a pair like this and we have to add them. All right, so zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. So we're getting two possible zeros. And when we do the same thing over here, we have to take this tree, okay, starting from there, and this tree, and we have to um, multiply them. So how do we do that? Well, we have to take the elements of this one, there's only one element, namely the tree starting there, and there's two elements of this one, and we have to add those, okay? So when we add um, this one uh, with, with this one, well, we just get this thing. And when we add it with this one, we get this thing, 
because zero plus anything is the anything. All right, so that's what we end up getting by taking this combination with this combination and multiplying. Multiplying the tr this tree with this tree. And what does this look like algebraically? Well, this is a four. This is alpha zero squared. Same thing like that. And this thing here is, well, uh, this was like an alpha, alpha one. And we have two of them coming out here. So that's like alpha one squared. So that's the way the caret operation works on, on these things, which is, you know, a little bit strange to us. Admittedly, this is a kind of a strange new arithmetic. We're in a kind of unusual world here. So the natural question though is, is this a consistent world and is it, is it an interesting world? Well, if we just restrict ourselves to addition and multiplication, it's certainly useful because we're recovering polynomial algebra in actually an unbounded number of variables. So that's already a very rich uh, discipline. And in fact, in our next video, we're going to see that uh, this becomes even much richer when we take the big step uh, to extending our number system to include negative numbers. So a lot of viewers have asked me, how are we going to do that? And it's a really interesting question. And I'm going to show you next time. And we're going to see that that really, again, expands our vision in a quite a fascinating way. Hope you'll join me for that. I'm Norman Wahlberger. Thanks for listening.